guys welcome back to my channel so if you're new here it's lovely to have you but if you're old hey boo it's nice to have you back did you know baking butter bread was so much easier than you ever thought oh well i'm here to show you that today it is very very easy to bake this delicious ghana butter bread or what nigerians call agege bread so let's get right into it first off we're going to put together our dry ingredients which is some hard flour or bread flour i've added some sugar salt and then some nutmeg powder I'll give that a good mix and then I'm going to add my yeast now. Now I didn't add the yeast early on because I didn't want it to have direct contact with the salt. So we mix our yeast together nicely and then we set it aside for later. Now onto our wet ingredients. I have some warm water. I've just added some warm milk and I'm going to add an egg to it. Also I'm adding some good quality vanilla extract. And then I'll give that a good mix and then we're going to start mixing both dry ingredients and wet ingredients together. I'm using my mixer here to put everything together so it's, it doesn't make too much of a mess. Or that makes me skip a couple of steps or a couple of long steps of mixing. Um, the wet and the dry and then the wet together so now I've mixed everything together and then I'm going to add the rest of my flour I'm going to leave all of the ingredients in the description box below so please take a look at them and then put yours together and that will also help you understand exactly what's going on now it's time to add our butter now I'm using both margarine and butter because I wanted that Ghanaian flavor and I also wanted the butter in there so I used half enough I'm going to leave all the ingredients, like I said, in the description box below, so do check them out. We add all our butter now, and then when it's all mixed together, I'm going to move everything onto a clean work surface and begin to knead my dough. Now, as you can see, my dough is really soft, yes, very soft. That would, be, that would help me control the amount of flour that is going into the bread or into the dough. If I had added everything or all of my flour in the beginning, that would make it difficult for me to take out if um, the flour ends up being too much. But in this way, I can gently or gradually add my flour and get the perfect consistency that I want or texture that I want. So make sure to take off all of the dough off the hook and then get it on the clean work surface. Now I'm going to sprinkle a generous amount of flour onto my work surface and onto my dough before I start kneading. I'm going to use a whole cup of flour for the kneading. Yes, a whole cup of flour. So I'm going to mix all of that with the dough and then start the kneading process. Actually, the kneading process has already started. So yes, I'm going to start kneading this dough and it's very easy to work with this dough. Instead of having a very stiff dough, some, recipe call, some recipes call for like a lot more flour and then the dough gets so stiff and it's so difficult to work with. Meanwhile, it's also going to be very difficult to knead this in your machine or in your stand mixer. You need to be careful because you may end up breaking your stand mixer. I have done that before kneading bread. So um, I don't really need my bread in my stand mixer anymore. I just mix it together and then get it on a clean work surface and then knead manually which works perfectly and it saves me my mixer for other things as well. So as and when the dough is getting a little bit too soft, you just sprinkle some dough and um, some flour on it, but please make sure you don't add too much flour. Just use the exact quantity I'm going to give you that I've done all the hard work and this is the easy one for you to do. So I stretched out my dough a bit to test if it was okay or if the elasticity was there and it wasn't so much so I continued kneading again but now it is okay so I'm going to put it in a bowl and then leave it on my work surface to rest while I prep my um, my bacon tins. Now this dough is not going to rise twice it is just a one rise because I'm using bread flour. And bread flour contains gluten and that gluten is what we need to activate through the kneading and we've done that already and it's looking good so we don't need to go through the process of getting to rise twice okay 
so I've prepped my baking tin and with some margarine and then I'm sprinkling some flour honestly after baking I wish I hadn't sprinkled the flour because it left some patches on my bread but that's okay because next time I won't do that again because this pan works perfectly this pan this is a local pan that I got from the market it works perfectly the other ones that are some that end up having your bread your bread sticking on the sides this didn't work that way at all so please know your baking tins very well and know how to prep them okay now the dough is ready it has risen even though i didn't i didn't expect it to rise this much after about 10 minutes it had risen to this level so i divided it into two and then i tried to get the same sizes to fit into the baking my two baking pans because the baking pans are the same size as well so our dough is ready to be rolled out and I'm going to use my rolling pin to help me roll this out to um, as smoothly as I can okay you can also use your hand to do that but I like to use my rolling pin it helps me a lot more and it's quite easy to do that so just stretch out the dough with a rolling pin and then keep folding as I'll be doing keep folding and turning so you get to the shape of your bacon tin in the meantime guys if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so now give this video a thumbs up leave all comments and questions in the comment section below also click on the notification bell by the subscribe button so that anytime i upload a new content you're first to be notified okay so you get the first hand treatment vip treatment okay also thank you so much for subscribing and for sharing my video and surprise there's a bonus video at the end of this video which is going to show you one way that i do or use my butter bread to make a one pan egg toast it is delicious it is yummy it is one of our favorite breakfasts at home and you will love it so please stay tuned keep watching to the end so that you can learn how to make some delicious toast after you're bake you're done baking your butter bread okay thank you so as you can see, I'm getting close to the size of my baking tin. Now I'm going to roll over from the top to the bottom into like a log sort of, yes. And then I'm going to pinch the seam side and the seam side is what I'm going to lay flat into my, into my baking tin. And when we're done with this one, we're going to repeat the same process for the second one as well, the second dough. And then both of them are going to rise for about between 30 to 45 minutes, okay? And then we're going to leave it to rise up to three quarters of the tin before we set it into our oven to bake. Now what I do is I don't cover it fully, I cover it so about, um, I leave a little bit of space at the edge of the baking tin so that I can see the level it has gotten to before I bake it. Now we're going to use a water bath. So I have some water in this bakeware that I'm going to set under the baking rack I'll be using to bake the butter bread. So that it's going to keep the bread nice and moist as it bakes and then it's going to come out really really good. So this first one that we did is ready to get into the oven. You can see the second one has a little more to go before it gets into the oven. So we're going to leave that for about five more minutes before we set it into our oven. And this is how it's looking in the oven now with a water bath under it. And then we baked this bread for a whole hour and 10 minutes. It took one hour, 10 minutes to bake this bread because I baked on medium heat. And then when I saw that it had risen nicely, I just set it on low. But after an hour, I set it on low to brown as, as nicely as I wanted, okay? You don't want your butter bread to burn so please keep an eye on it but don't be opening the oven too much don't open the oven until after 50 minutes to check exactly what's going on and before you put your bread into the oven make sure that it hasn't risen to the top because the rising the rising process is going to continue in the oven now if it rises to the top the bread or the dough is going to find its way out of the baking tin it's happened to me before i don't want it to happen to you so don't let it rise all the way to the top three quarters level is okay and then you can bake it nicely now look how perfect this bread came out i mean the whole place was smelling like a very amazing bread bakery it was it was just amazing i just loved it the whole process it was most so nice and it was so soft and 
trying just how I like it. I like my bread trying, honestly. And it came out just that way. This bread is just so perfect. You can use it for whatever you want, for your toast, for your sandwiches, for anything at all, and you will absolutely love it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. In the meantime, please subscribe to my channel, and there are so many other videos that you can see on my channel. Also, the bonus video is coming right up, so stay tuned and watch that.